So number seven then from this new hire, specimen paper number one. Here we go, factorising a cubic expression. It's not an equation, so no equal to zeros appearing here. Although you wouldn't get penalised probably. For three marks, show that x plus one is a factor of this. Now there are several ways to do that. One way would be simply to say, well, x plus one is a factor means that x equals negative one is a root. And then test if it is a root. And that simply means if you put it into this expression, the expression should come to zero. So you try that. So negative one cubed minus 13 times negative one minus 12. That'll be negative one plus 13 minus 12, which equals zero. And then the statement would then be, well, it was a root, so it was a factor. Which means x equals negative 1 is a root, which means x plus 1 is a factor. And there's three marks. The marks would be 1 for realising that x equals negative 1 is a root, 1 for evaluating that to get 0, and then 1 for the statement. However, the problem with this is, it's a bit of a dead end for what follows, because you're then required to factorise this. So that would just be like going back and starting from scratch again. So, where you go, and back to this, so that was that mark. Use synthetic division if you're wanting to find factors as well as showing that it's a root. Oh, remember to put down all the terms. The x cubed term, there's no x squared term the x term and the coefficient at the end, and then just go through the synthetic division. So that's bring it down, multiply it up, add it down, multiply it up, add it down, multiply it up, and then finally add it down, and you've got that zero. Now, the thing to remember about this is, this does two things in once. It's actually an evaluation table. If you want to work out the value of this expression at any number, you feed it through the table, and that will be the value of that expression. But, at the same time, this part here that comes out, these intermediate answers, turn out to be the quotient, the number of times that this divides into that. So it's a dual-purpose one, so you tend to call it synthetic division, rather than an evaluation table. But you still have to make a statement, so this would be worth a mark here. And the statement would be, you could either say x equals negative 1 is a root, or you could say this, the remainder equals 0, so that means that x plus 1 divided in exactly, so x plus 1 is a factor. But part B for two marks is just factorise it fully. Well x cubed minus 13x minus 12 turned out to be x plus 1 times this part. Well, that'll be the constant, and then that's x and that's x squared. x squared minus x minus 12, so it's almost done. It's just a case of factorising that quadratic there, and it's a simple one. The first times the first makes the first, so it must be x times x. Factors of 12 that have a difference of just 1, that'll be 3 and 4. The negative will go to the larger of them, and that says they've got opposite signs, so that's it, done. Now, there is another way that you could have shown it's a factor, which would be to carry out the proper long division rather than the synthetic variety. But you shouldn't do that, really. Not when it's just dividing by a nice little linear term that you can use synthetic division for. And that would be this, actually carry it out like a long division. But again, you have to make sure that all the columns are there, so there was nothing in the x squared, minus 13x minus 12. And the way you would actually carry out the real division would be this, same as before, to say, what would you multiply this by to produce an x cubed? That'd have to be an x squared. So I'll put an x squared in the x squared column. Multiply it, x squared times x is x cubed x squared times x is an x squared. And I have no idea why I haven't put the two plus signs in there. They should be in there, of course. Subtract it to find the remainder. So that's nothing take away 1 is a negative x squared. Then carry it on to the next column, or rather bring that column down to it. 
and then we start again. What would I multiply this by to get a negative x squared and multiply it by a negative x? So a negative x goes in the x column, you know, it's just like units, tens, hundreds, thousands. Multiply it out, negative x squared minus x, subtract it to find the remainder, negative 13 plus 1 would be negative 12x, and that of course comes to 0. Take the remainder up, or just bring that down to the remainder. And lastly, what would you multiply this by to get this? That's a negative 12. So that'd be negative 12x minus a 12. They're identical, so the remainder's 0. Now that's the full division, but you wouldn't do that because synthetic division does fine, and it's a lot shorter. You would have to do this full division, and you would do it later on, for instance, in the advanced tire, if this was more than just a linear term. If that was x squared, etc., then you'd have to do the full division that way. Now, there is one more technique, which is to say, well, if that's a factor of this, then I should be able to find a quadratic factor that would generate that something that would generate x cubed minus 13x minus 12, and then try and discover if this exists. And if it does, then that means that that's a factor. And the way you would find that would be to say, well, the first times the first makes the first, so that must be an x squared. I shouldn't have put it in until I said that. The last times the last makes the last, so that must be a minus 12. But what's this middle term? Is there a middle term that works for this? So you'd say, well, plus k lots of x. Now, if you knew it was a factor, then you could just expand this and compare coefficients with only one term, and that would do. But if I want to find out if this is a factor, I'd actually have to test if there is a k that works for all the terms. So you'd say, right, what about the x squared terms? What makes up the x squared terms? Well, on this side, it would have been x times a kx, so that's a kx squared. And the 1 times the x squared makes an x squared. And on this side, there's no x squared. So that says you've got, taking out the x squared, you've got k plus 1, lots of x squared, should come to 0. So k should be negative 1. Right, as before, look, if k is negative 1, x squared minus x minus 12. But that doesn't prove it in this case. If I knew that was a factor, I could do that. If I want to demonstrate it is a factor, then I'd have to demonstrate it also works for the x term. Although... I did demonstrate it was a factor by showing that at negative 1 the result was 0. But if I wanted to show consistency, then I would say, well, what about the x terms? What generates the x terms here? Well, that would be the x times the negative 12. And it would be the 1 times the kx. And that should produce the x term, which is negative 13. Take out the x's, that says k minus 12 is negative 13. So once again, k equals negative 1, so it was consistent. So that is a factor, because I can find a quadratic that does this properly. And that quadratic was x squared minus x minus 12. But don't do that. That was just for interest, hopefully. And don't do that either, because synthetic division is just so much quicker and less liable to error than do going through this.